Hello and welcome to regular feature one five five. Oh, you had to do the bloody comedy trumpet on the end. We had something original going on there. It was we had dynamic. the belching of the syllables. And then you went... And then into a weird harmony and a trumpet at the end. That was practically art, actually, Log. And well, then you I think smashed you'll find up the art. I added to the art. There's no subtraction in art. It's all just piling art on top of everything else until you've got a big, lovely hump of art. Mm. Sometimes subtraction can result in a positive number, as I've been learning from maths. Say what? How is it, everyone? Doing? Oh. I'm doing better than you, Stephen, because I know what you've been doing today. I've had to feckin' start a job. A real job. A real job in an office where you wear shoes or, or trainers. Well, or I, went trainers. To, <laughs> I went to Rocksteady Studios while they were making Batman Arkham Asylum. And, no, it was Arkham City, and yeah. one of their art directors didn't have shoes on at his desk. And I thought, this is, a, this is just the kind of place I want to work, oh, I don't think so. I never really... People who take their shoes off at work, come on. And they, when they do that, the kind of people who take their shoes off at work are invariably the kind of people who also wrap their feet around each other and the legs of their swivel chair. Oh, yeah, getting it all it's, moist with their foot sweat. Ugh, it's pornographic is you, what it is. If you want to take your shoes off at work, there's a really easy get around. If you want to take your, your shoes, shoes off when you're at work, work, join my club. Here's an easy workaround. Just wear some of those, like, habaneros. There's a flip-flop things. The little flip-flop things, which are basically like thongs for your toes, where you just put on this tiny bit of plastic on the bottom of your foot, and it has a little... Little thong thing that goes between your big toe. When you basically haven't got any shoes on. You see, flip flops are like thongs for your. They are kind of, aren't they? You... I mean, I'm not wrong. In Aust- well, I'm not wrong. No, in Australia, with me. they're called thongs. Right. Well, see, they then Australia's already on side with me. This is great. But did you just think independently that a flip flop is like a thong? Yeah. But are you using? And I guess the whole genital... Australia has as well. <laughs> independently <laughs> thought that. Does thong just mean something that? Goes between some else, a bit of string. Uh, it's technically something like garotsu gootsy. Goots! <laughs> Ooh, me gootsy! Me gootsy, me tall gootsy. <laughs> and me garotsu. And me geesh gootsy. Me geesh gootsy. <laughs> Where were we? Well, Where were we? Where were we? We were, 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 were talking about my new job. Hey! It's yeah, which is it's a very high flying city job, I believe. I now work for City AM. City AM. It's unbelievable. Yet, and yet they make you work until 5 pm. Yeah. That's mad. I just don't get that. Yeah. Um, I should call it City AM and a bit of PM as well. Well, I'm the gonna majority of it is PM. If it's nine to five, there's five hours of PM, three hours AM, Matt. All right. Fucking City... get, get a fucking grip, Matt. <laughs> okay. City, little bit of AM, and then quite a lot of PM. 37.5% AM. Ooh, that's good. That's a great name for a, like, a radio it's got station, my Gucci all <laughs> oh, my t- Get a thong on it. Yeah. Quick. Oh, oh, divide my... Th- Taint with a Gucci Gucci. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck are we talking about? Karen, tell me about your job. Uh, I work across from Mincing Lane. <laughs> right. They That's... put that there just for you? Uh, I, I assume so. Yeah, it's it, a it looks like it was built quite comedy, recently. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just off Bummer Boulevard. <laughs> Bummer Boulevard. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Right. And it's right near the... Um... <laughs> Rimming Orchards. <laughs> Rimming Orchards. <laughs> Um, what else happened? I saw a poo in a toilet that wasn't didn't belong to me. Really? That's, that's, what, what? I, it's been so long since I've seen a poo in a Immediate toilet. Immediate response. Leave, flush, piss or shit on it. Pissed on it as I flushed it away. Oh. It, we I pretended that your piss carried the force of the flush. <laughs> yeah. I am a powerful pisser. Watch me. <laughs> well, the poo's blind. It can only guess from its <laughs> touch sensation that your piss is sufficiently strong to flush it around the U-bend. So it will be... Thinking pretty highly of you as it goes down the sewers. <laughs> so it's like a dolphin. Yeah. It can feel like the waves of piss. Do- yeah, well, dolphins have eyes. Not wanting to dwell yeah. on a poo, but was it a, a solid line? Was it a coil? It was a short horseshoe line. Four inches. Um, maybe like a Mars bar style well, texture to, be, to it. To be fair to the person who did it. The, that might have slipped out completely unnoticed. They might have just thought they'd done a fart. Yeah, uh, yeah. And when who you... has time at City AM? It's a busy London newspaper. Got, that's right to my, <laughs> my, my desk that's appropriate to me. <laughs> I don't know what desks you have there, Steve. I'm so sorry. Oh. As I learn more about your job, maybe I'll just do better jest- desk jokes. When you say <laughs> the, the shit was the, the, the texture of a Mars bar, yeah. 
Do you mean also the flavour? <laughs> <laughs> do you mean a specific bit of it, or do you think? Do you mean it was like in three different bits, it, or like layered together? If you were in a sitcom and someone replaced a Mars bar with a shit accidentally, this would be that shit. Wow, what a claim to fame! Yeah, and I saw that. it on my first day. Well, imagine ah. what you're going to see tomorrow. <laughs> no, <know>, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or other big news I'm getting a verified tick on Twitter no. oh what yeah. just because you're a bloody yeah. journalist yeah because I'm a journalist I'm a reporter somebody said to me what if day. I go to Baghdad what if I go to Baghdad you're not going to get email to Twitter <laughs> <laughs> what if I go to Baghdad Twitter you can let us in on all the fucking fancy gizmos that are unveiled to you when you get a verified tick because apparently you can like ban people yeah you know how the Twitter window is normally rectangular Get a round one. What? Perfectly spherical wow. screen. Where per- tweets stream out of it. Sphera- <laughs> spherical, and it's like a helmet you can put your head into. You know, you ever watch like the BBC News? You really are in a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, you get a literal echo chamber, which is great fun because you can hear your, your own voice. Yeah, that's, you know, it's, not, it's not even people who agree with you. It's just your oppo- your own opinion shouted back at you <laughs> yeah. by your own voice. Opinions, opinions, yeah. opinions, opinions. So that's my feature about how I'm going to get a tick. Yeah, it's, it's funny because actually people have said to me that the only way you can get verified on Twitter is by being like obscenely famous celebrity or pop star or just being someone who works at a mid to high tier news publication. Well, you might think I'm being arrogant by mentioning it, but I think I'm being very modest because the arrogant thing to do would have been to stay quiet about it, let people assume I got the tick because of my brand on Twitter, my personal brand on Twitter. But it's not, it's because I tried it. It's because of that Sims review you retweeted, you posted. <laughs> Lots of people like, are trying to like, pretend, yeah. pretend that they wrote that Sims review and they didn't. Are they? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna say, oh, I'd, love it if, uh, I'd love it if blue ticks were like blue plaques, where like, you click on the blue tick and it would come up telling you like what that person did, or like why why they've got one. Like, oh yeah. Like, it's something as simple as like, you know, oh, yeah. I had, had a great pop hit in the 80s, yeah. or like, you know, or, he's currently... Receiving hundreds of death threats or something like just really like, oh. got loads more. The fav to retweet ratio was weird. Here's a here's a blue tick to come. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> no one at Twitter understands it. Yeah, you, you got like it. five thousand fabs and twelve retweets. That's weird. Have a blue tick. Is it okay to pronounce it fav? Fav like fava bean. Yeah. How else would you and say? A nice Kianti. Well, it's, not, it's <laughs> short for favorite, isn't it? So I always say fav. fav. But Fav has an E on the end. It Fav does, doesn't. But, but Fav is favourite. These are my favourite things. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I, just, I didn't hear a jingle. <laughs> Can I ask for another jingle, please? Steve didn't hear that one. That one was too loud. Oh, <laughs> but the third jingle was we'll just, just right. right. So, yeah, I, I, this is not a really feature, but I just knew that because Steve... <laughs> job and because he's a professional he wasn't going to want to go in a lot of detail about what happened on his first day of work. Mm-hmm. Certainly not so. going to slander my colleagues when say they did big <laughs> messy shits in the toilet. No, <laughs> precisely. That could might have been someone in an adjoining, is there any adjoining companies? No. Oh, it's <laughs> all it's someone at the DAM done a big shit, big shit. <laughs> it's a Mars bar, whoa, so, whoa, whoa. It's much better than the situation at Future Publishing. Was that, was that to the tune of She's a Lady? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the perfect blend fit. Okay, so I basically attached tiny cameras and microphones to Steve and uh, just spent my whole day just watching what Steve was doing, listening in on his amazing adventures at City AM. Mm. And these are three things that Steve did today that I thought were a little bit unprofessional. Oh, shit. Boy. So, um, so first of all... So busted. Oh, so bust. oh you guys. Oh. You got me. <laughs> you got me good. <laughs> at about 11.15, Steve thought the photocopier was a B-day and then spent three hours asking everyone in the office if his ass looked black, but not in a race way, I mean jet black, like jet black toner cartridge, for example. <laughs> oh, imagine yeah. that. It's embarrassing, it's just, Steve. <laughs> well, how else am I going to know if my ass is all black? It like is, it's black. still black now. Yeah. It's covered in it, I mean, that stuff you doesn't should, come out. You should have got everyone to get 
just say it's part of. I've noticed there's a poo in the toilet, and I just want everyone to photocopy the arses. Oh, right, 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 and just so we see who's got little blue, little brown smears. Yeah, because presumably, if you if you don't flush a poop, then or because like imagine, imagine there was no toilet paper no on top of the paper. Yeah, so, so, he, so either he went into a different cubicle to wipe, which is committed. Wow. I <laughs> like, like, wow. Yeah. Maybe it did like, <laughs> that's Jonathan Creek shit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it did like a sneaky, sneaky stealth thing where it looks like it's flushed, and then like a few seconds later, it just does da da da, and it just comes back. <laughs> like that's exactly what happened, isn't it? And the camera zooms in on it, and there I goes, think that's what happens yeah. sometimes. I think some of them come back. It does, and sometimes you shit and you look, and it's just not there. It's just somehow like, done a, the perfect dive. Yeah, the and reverse. it's just gone through. I'm always quite proud of them. Mm. <sighs> Maybe those are the ones that come back. Sunday, mate. Da, da, da. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Double twist in the <laughs> toilet in the next cubicle. Oh, done, done, done. I just, I literally just imagined my own toilet at home with a camera crash zoom into it as if a, a shit I did this morning has just, <laughs> or just a pa- come back. Paranormal right activity style CCTV just trained on the toilet, <laughs> and, uh, still shot for two minutes as a poop slowly just comes back. <laughs> whilst, whilst you're writhing in bed in the next room, like, apparently <laughs> possessed, split screen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the second thing Steve did after lunch was he ushered his boss into the toilets to take a look at his own impressive shit motioning to the bowl and then swinging around in one smooth motion for a cool high five and says that looks like promotion material to me that's what Steve said is that independent shit story? yeah, yeah. were you aware of that? no oh, no. no I know that's why I was amazed when yeah. Steve started lying about other people's shit I was like well, when oh, my feature turns right. out to be all about shits we're going to seem like a one trick pony <laughs> yeah. it's almost like this is exactly how we started the podcast five <laughs> years ago but then five yeah years. Steve said that looks like promotion material to me and by that I mean that all of the management in this office are gigantic clumps of walking feces I would never say that and you still you still were hanging waiting for a high five where you said that I was like whoa I almost had to look away from the tiny cameras I'd hidden in all of your clothing because it was just <laughs> awkward. Did you... What, what, what you should have done, not did you, because I know you didn't, what you should have done when you found this, the poo in the toilet was carry it out in your hands, lob it into your boss's face and go, shitty gay men more like, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then climbed, tried to climb the wall, failed, pulled a bit of panelling off with you, fell on your back, pinned to the floor by your panelling, and then just said, help. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the shitty gay man. <laughs> Sorry, you're not gay man. Log is right. You should always try and make an impression on your first day. Mm. Mm. You hide me for wackiness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you Left fucking wacky. wackiness. <laughs> but then, yeah, in the afternoon, you bought a full pack of mini Twixes and then ate them all without offering a single Twix to anyone, which I just think is horrible. That's true. They all have their own packs of mini Twixes, I, I assume. Oh, I got <laughs> that. <laughs> City A, yeah, man. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't rely on charity. Get through the day. Nerf Twix. Use Nerf instead. Of, use Twixes instead of Nerfs. Well, another like, another wacky thing like you can do. Nerf just gun. fire them into thing, and then the last oh. one is the shit you found in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and you just shout "shitty gay man" and falls oh. in the floor. <laughs> Still I'm not shouting shit. "shitty gay men" at any know, point because I smell a catchphrase here. <laughs> <laughs> you with your own shit. It's just gold. It's funny. I think it's a really good paper. Personally speaking, professionally speaking, well, I, I've got no problem with it. I just, I just never picked it up because I didn't think it was for me. No, it's, but I'm not. A, I'm not a prof- city professional, am I? No, it's, you're not. A city, I'm not. Either. Well, I'm, I'm not a shitty gay man. <laughs> Why would I read it? <laughs> I think as somebody, works, you are a shitty gay man. Yeah, I am. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> If I did believe in that mishearing of the names, the paper's name, then I probably would be really interested in it. have seven copies of it. But I think it's fact that I've had a disinclination towards businessmen for the, my whole life. I just don't trust them, their motives. I love businessmen and bankers. <laughs> Should we have a proper feature? <laughs> regular features, regular features. What is a feature coming next? Let us see. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of um, local interest magazines. I'm, uh, I've been trying to start my own way of interest, introducing features, and it's, I don't know about you. Oh, yeah, Have you no, noticed, I noticed that? that. Yeah, yeah, now you say it. Yeah. But then I didn't notice Steve doing his thing until... Episode, like, 60 or 70. Yeah. yeah. You don't notice it so much these days, 
because I don't do any features. <laughs> I did a really good feature last time. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I, 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 I done loads today, but I've done nothing we, we for have, ages. We so. have all, we all have days off, but yeah. we're so we're so good. No one notices. Even our yeah. days off are like we're working full pelt in normal world. Yeah, in normal town, Steve's got a real job now. I've said it once already. It's a real job with his poop in the toilet. Like, and like humans do these things. Anyone listening to this, we probably sound like we're talking really quickly because they work half as fast as we do. Yeah. Anyway, Long Eaten Website Extra. Oh. A fantastic a magazine that's available on the streets of Long Eaton and Sandy Acre in uh, Nottingham. That it's, headline is weird. It's, um, well, let's get to the headline just after we've discussed That's the why name. I didn't read it out loud. Long Eaten Website Extra. It's available for 40p. <laughs> and um, it's if, if you've exhausted Long Eaton's extensive web Website, listings yeah. and um, what the, do you do the, when you... the bits on Yahoo where they've got like local area listings. So, okay, see yeah, when, you, when you run out of space on a website where yeah, you need, need extra, it, yeah. why not do a print run of all the things that you wanted to put on the website but didn't have any room for. And charge 40p and for charge it. charge 40 pence for it. <laughs> yeah, to cover a, the printing costs. Yeah, it's, I mean, they charge 40 pence and that's quite audacious considering it's very, very... Um, Ad heavy. Ad heavy. Ad heavy, Ad heavy. yes. Mm. And I don't know, to the point where I don't even know whether I trust <laughs> that Mary Johnson's, one, Mary Johnson's 100th birthday... I don't even know if that's an advertorial oh, or it's not. It's an advertorial for, for uh, it's got Mary a, Johnson's biscuits. Yeah, it's got yeah. a picture of her. It's be clearly been paid for. Look, oh, mean, she's wearing an Armani necklace. It's a short story. Mary Johnson was 100 years old on Monday the 27th of July. Mary resides in a nursing home was in Risley. 100. Originally from County Mayo. Oh, Steve, bit of interest hey in you. Hey-o, <laughs> Mary is the eldest child of four. She left Ireland around 1936, and at that point, it faded out. Like, how am I supposed to care about that? Wow. She's just, she's old, but she's old and she's She She's certainly lived a rich life. Yeah, she's spending all of her money now (laughs) on advertorial. And now... First she was in Ireland, then she wasn't in Ireland. If you look at the photo, she's tilting at exactly the same angle as uh, the KFC Colonel Sanders. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, she she is. is. And she's got the little bow tie. Yeah. It's because she's from that She's 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 holding some chicken now (laughs) that you mention it, yeah. And it is an advert for her new... uh, Branch of fried chicken outlets in Long Eaton and San Diego. Um, San Diego, uh, paired with San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> I'd like that. And if you turn to ta- if you turn to pay five, you've got um, local address news. If you, you can all see there, a little bit of meat was stolen from a San Whoa. Diego supermarket recently. Meat. And uh, police have released CCTV footage of that. Did they catch him? The scoundrel, the meat no. scoundrel. Well, I guess we have to look on the next page of the website to find out what happened. After we are that. on the next page of the website. <laughs> I was, that, this, and that's this is the hyperlinks. Sound. <laughs> that's the sound of hyperlinks. Uh, no, there's no there's no news of it. But he escaped. He escaped the scene on a pedal cycle. What are you gonna do? What's a pedal cycle? A bike. Well, it's I like think. an unambiguous oh. form of bicycle that, b- that won't let anyone think that it was anything as exciting as a motorbike. A motorbicycle. A motorbicycle. Okay. okay. <laughs> but, but the bit I brought you here for today is a uh, <laughs> reason I brought it. You say spinning around in your chair. <laughs> I, love, I saw a little headline which just said like car collides with caravan as a headline. It just reminds me so much of local newspapers. From you'll be pleased to know I've read that article and no one was hurt. Good. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank God. I was petrified. But if you look at this spread of died text, in that crash. <laughs> I want you to react to this spread of text in the knowledge that I'm going to read it out to you. Oh. Act in dismay. You're not you really the whole thing out. You're not really going to read all of that, are you? I am, but the fun thing is, we're not going to interrupt you. <laughs> no, the fun thing is, your job isn't to interrupt me. In to interrupt me. That your job sounds... is or isn't to. Interrupt. Your job is to interrupt me. Hang on, that means that. That's the just... fun thing. The fun thing is. I'm going to play the part of someone who comes to my pub and talks to me non-fucking-stop and I just want to die. (laughs) And you get to be the other people at the bar who are trying to make life livable for those around them. Okay, I was just thinking, like, hang on a minute, your feature is to read something really long while everyone else constantly interrupts you. Is this one of my features that you've stolen? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's all right, isn't it? No, um, my, my how does this feature to, end? This, this <laughs> that's, feature, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah. This feature is called Bus Stop by C.R. Davis. Bus Stop. A bus stop and a brewery. And it begins with the phrase, 
it is all go on the tram. <laughs> it is all go. He doesn't. He doesn't even go. It's all go on the tram. He's like fucking Data from Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> data could use contractions in later episodes. <laughs> When he got his contraction <laughs> In like the second episode, he like has sex with a woman. Full sex with a woman. Yeah. And he said, and it, is he, yeah. Like it is good. It is good. I like to have sex with a woman. Then he takes a deep <laughs> drink from a Nutri-Blast. And, <laughs> and smokes three <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> and then says, fancy another couple of finger blasts. <laughs> before I go to work at, at my terminal. At my terminal, doing the data. <sighs> so, I'm going to read this. Read it. And every, the first paragraph I'll read straight, and at every paragraph break, I'll give you a new topic with which you have to interrupt me. Oh, okay. This sounds good. Right. It is all go on the tram. A full shadow test service began on Friday the 31st of July. If the new utility manholes at the junction of Queen's Road East and University Boulevard are completed, it is likely it will open to the public on Monday the 17th of August. I want to die. Initially... So I can't Chilwell was incorrectly spelt. When are we allowed to start interrupting you? You're new. The category to interrupt okay. with is... Here we go. Naughty nighties. Okay. I went with the West Park walkers on a local walk to Barker's Pond on Tuesday the 28th of July. It was a gusty cool morning, but at least did not rain. Those gusts, I tell you, they can and it, probably blow up a naughty oh, nighty. Yeah. And it was a pleasant walk. And they'll they'll get those frills, those fiery uh, frills going up af- around. Af- oh, I'd love a gust to sweep af- up af- there. Afterwards. A, 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 a nice gust, gust a, sweeping up there. A, a group yeah. of us. Chilling your bits. Repair from red hot from a bit of naughty to business. The, to, to the Eaton Farm, where I had a large bowl of chips and an Americano, <laughs> finishing just in time to get the Indo fight to the New Beast and Exchange, which is situated on Styring Street. From there, it was a short walk to the Weatherspoons Lost Last Post They sell some nice pub. nighties down there on Stylish. I met a woman right. in the Weatherspoons who had a very yeah. naughty nighty, actually. It was ridiculous. Where there the, are. You, could, you could get so much uh, woofed in air where, going up there. Get the where the transports and enthusiast groups meet. You can get well. kicked out of a Weatherspoons now, I'd been dependent told about, on the naughtiness of the nighty. Because some of them you have I've been told about the Trent Barton Trider. Some of them have got windows in them, haven't they? So you can just see everything. It's just like a big perspex window. There was a bus rally at Reddington. I asked a gentleman who looked like a bus enthusiast if he knew about a bus enthusiast group meeting the pub, and miraculously he did, although he was not a member of the group. Having shown me the one area of the pub, I was then had to wait for the mother members' drivers a bit early. Oh, when the introductions were over, I spent a pleasant couple of hours chatting and quaffing beer before departing and getting the Y5 and 29 home. A new interruption topic is being introduced. The new introduction topic is four-inch shits. <gasps> Callback. Felix Koshers. I wrote these I'm not sure between the word, features. Hey. I'm not sure the word shit is a callback, <laughs> to be honest. It's a callback to at least four dozen episodes of regular features. And many other things around the world. Felix Koshers run a tour to Leak Market in the Rudyard Lake Steam Railway oh, on Wednesday the 29th of July. Railway, don't they? But it was a steam one. It was, price, yeah, yeah. A proper steam of railway. Of only £16.80 inclusive. £16.80. Senior, I close bracket. Let me tell you, uh, Log, you, said, you mentioned senior. Senior, yes. Have you ever seen a senior citizen do a four-inch long shit? Well, not... In as far as the coach to Ilkeston, where I caught the the fifteen bus to Sawley Junction. No, what you just said does not carry on from what I just said. I'm but, trying to th- talk to you about four inch long shits. But my mango card wouldn't read that. You know, if you eat a lot of this, mango, this... it's very fibrous. You know, yeah, and they will. <laughs> Help you with your four inch shits. Or maybe make a bigger <laughs> one, but usually. <laughs> Are we being too good at interrupting you, though? This is great, because I'm trying to imagine how one of the bars at the. one of the bars at the bar would actually respond to you saying that. And I've tried to do this with one of them, and they do just blink and start back on the topic they were on before. <gasps> That's horrific. As in, like, there was one customer who I know doesn't have access to the internet because. He doesn't have access to a fucking shower, so how could he get on a... F- <laughs> how did he have Wi-Fi? And I had to take him to one side and say, Mate, you stink, and you've got to have a shower before you come in here again. Yeah. And all he did you have was... You crazy hair like a polar bear. And, you, and you've got... Um, what's, what's another insult from... Deathly and Celeste. Deathly and Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I could say... Either you have a shower... 
or I'm going to have to shove a coconut up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, serious threat. Yeah. I like that. He ain't got no alibi. He ain't got no alibi. He's ugly. <laughs> uh, so, this, one thing as a barman, as a landlord, I suppose, I don't want my job to have to be the the kid who tells their friend that they smell and they could get more friends if maybe they smelt less bad. But all I had to do... I, he said, can I have a... Can I put... This is the Cobby Wobby man from the gay episode. Oh, Cobby Wobby. So regular, regular listeners may be aware of him, but I wouldn't assume that everyone does know about him, but he's just a... There's amazing. a man who said Cobby Wobby. Yes, yeah, I don't... His way of asking for a cob was, or a roll, I don't suppose I could trouble you for one of your delicious Cobby Wobbies. This man has recently developed a more emphatic problem with his health, which means that he has an aura of stench. Venus, stench of anus. 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 It sounds like a song from uh, from Evita. Stench of anus. Stench of anus. Stench of anus. <laughs> so I had to go into the backyard and sit with him for like five minutes, have a four-minute conversation about... Bullshit. Hygiene. And then say, so anyway, the reason I'm sat with you here today is because you stink and nobody likes you. (laughs) Did he run away crying and never come back? No, he went away for four days, came back and said, I've had a bath. I've bruised my legs. In the bath? Getting into and out of the bath. I mean, I've got to the point where I said, there is a place around the corner where you can get haircuts for free and they will wash your hair and do that. We, We do live in an area where the homeless are well catered for. Um, but no, he just bruises oh. his shin on his own bath and then comes into my pub and stinks. That's really sad. And spends a lot on Stilton. It's not it is it's, sad, it's, but he's not nice. <laughs> that is, that is. And also, oh. like, if you already smell a lot, then spending a lot of money on Stilton is not a good investment. I don't think. Yeah, I think he's doubling down. Or maybe, you know, if you stink anyway, might as well buy some Stilton. Well, yeah. What yeah. does he do? Rub it on his balls? I think the risk... <laughs> Maybe he does. Maybe that's the problem. If I smelled really good, I'd be all like, oh, I'm not buying any Stilton. I smell awesome. Yeah. I don't want to ruin what I've got going on. <laughs> if I smell really <laughs> bad, I'm going to oh, double yeah. down on this with Stilton <laughs> yeah. balls. I'm going to dip this ball in Stilton and this one yeah. in some rather funky Dairy Lee. Oh. I don't want you to keep reading this boring thing. Yeah, I don't know what this feature is, because it's like, it basically seems to be a feature that engineers what we do in the bad podcast when we just talk over each other. Well, I think that's lots of fun. (laughs) 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 Fucking on the bitches, looking at the features. So, I have been doing things with vegetables for quite a long time now. Mmm, yes. Um, I've been getting quite into it. And one of the things I've really got into is a device called the Nutribullet. Nutribullet. Now, the Nutribullet is a funny thing because basically <laughs> it's sold as being this super health device for like healthy people. When actually, it's mostly. Basically, you can just inject. You just fucking do put shit into it and then just jam it into yes. your forearm. Well, this is the must. That was the must-have gadget of Christmas 2014. Yeah, was it? Oh yeah, well, you couldn't get it's one for love, thing. nor money. <laughs> money. Normandy. Normandy. <laughs> mm, I love Normandy. Let's go there. People turn up. Get there for love, Normandy. Mm. I love Normandy. <laughs> oh, we're clever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some words, have some words sound similar. Yeah. Oh. People turned up with like shopping baskets full of Furbies trying to trade them for, a, for just one. <laughs> for just one. Just one. Just one. The depreciation rate on Furbies is shocking. I know, right? They're completely worthless now. It's actually like you have to have like 18 wheelbarrows full of Furbies just to buy a loaf of bread. Yeah. It's sad. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. It's, 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 it's poor people. They have to like burn Furbies just to stay warm at night. Furbies. What were the new Furbies? They came out, didn't they? Doesn't matter. They burn them as well. Yeah. It's grim. But anyway, uh, um, the new Furbies. Sorry, come on. I don't want to talk about Furbies. I do want to talk about Furbies, do you? No, no. Talk no. about Furbies. Get they invented system. a new Furby. What did the new Furbies do that the old ones didn't? Oh, that's a good question. They blinked twice as much. <laughs> they could run up your legs. And, and their beaks <laughs> this is were bullshit. sort of like. <laughs> their beaks could flex in a way, so like they could sneer. Yeah. Instead of just clacking open and clucking, they could like, sneer. They had 70 motors in, in the beak alone. So it could go 
It's more than that in the Xbox One controller. <laughs> it could whistle at you. <laughs> oh, God, using its actual meaty using lips. Actual meat rather than just lips. playing a sound recording yeah, of a whistle. You have to replace it with a pack of sausages. <laughs> that they send you once a month. There's sometimes the sausages wear out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, next month I'm going to try pork and apple. <laughs> anyway, sorry. 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 I don't no, want to, I don't no, talk about Furbies anymore. Please don't apologise. The only thing you should have to apologise for is the fact that I now have an image of a Furby with a, with a sausage pork lips. and apple sausage lips, which somehow is way more disturbing than just plain sausage. I don't know why. Mm. Um, whistling, but you put too much sausage meat, so the whistle actually just comes out as like a... Yeah, or the skin is a bit loose, so it actually inflates. <laughs> I just imagine the bits of apple falling and out. You put it next to your child in bed. So it can read a story. It's just, it's just farting flecks of raw pork into your kid's ear. <laughs> is that is that going to be the worst Christmas toy? I think. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have nightmares now about like Kirby with your face and sausage lips whispering in my ears. <laughs> cool. Whew. Right. So uh, neutral bullet. Neutral bullet. <laughs> neutral bullet. It's uh, it's basically. This sort of thing that you... It's like a blender. It's a fancy it's, blender. It's a fancy blender. But the thing is, it's funny how everyone I talk to about it, like, lots of people I know are really into them. Like, lots of people who are just, like, 30-year-old blokes love them. And it's not because it's this, like, evangelical, life-changing health device. It's just amazing for people who are really lazy. Because all you have to do is just find a combination of things that look a bit green or fruit and some nuts, maybe, and put them in it with some water... And then you put it on, and it just makes you a drink that you then neck, and you just like, hooray, I have just eaten a passable, quite healthy meal. And then the bit that it blends in and the cup is the same thing. So it means you can basically go, food, and then drink it, and then wash it under the tap, and then you're like, I'm done. I just ate something, and there was no and mess. Nutribullet Nutribullet paid for this. No. Is the point of you drinking it really quickly because it tastes like shit? Yeah, it does. That's the second thing. It tastes like <laughs> shit. Um, but... but it, you kind of get used to it, and then that's fine. Life is too short to eat things that don't taste lovely all of the time. That's what I found, and that's I'm sticking to it. <laughs> also, some cigarettes and drugs. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. I, well, that's I, why Steve. I started in smoking time. again now, Steve. I love it. It's great. <laughs> I, it, it's fantastic, Log. Let nice. me tell you, there's nothing like smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Do you, do you allow like, smoking in your bedroom, Steve? Why don't we light up a cigarette let's, now? Let's all light up a cool, soothing guys, cigarette now. Guys, guys, can I have a word? I think, I think, I think the whole sponsored episode thing is really good. We should, probably should have talked. We shouldn't do Nutribullet and cigarettes in all the right. same one. Well, have you tried putting some smooth menthol cigarettes into your Nutribullet? Yeah, that sounds lovely, actually. They did want us to try and get children to smoke cigarettes. Yeah. So we okay. need to go carry through all right, So we'll aim the Nutribullet at older people, yeah. but kids... Fags. On the cigarettes. Things they don't have to smoke much. Look like an adult. You, they smoke a few, and then that's then they'll smoke them. Okay, okay, so. so back when I was younger, I used to just like I don't know, just smoke cigarettes all the time because that was the only way I could be cool. But now I'm thirty, I'm really into vegetables. Well, kid, yeah. You know, like you don't know, you don't know, <laughs> you don't see what you do, what your dad's doing, do you? Oh well, those no. Animals, Giving up fags left, right, and centre because they're scared of death. Oh. You're immortal. Yeah, Have a fag. and also all of the years that smoking takes off you, Nutribullet gives back to you. Hey, <laughs> that's, that's the only life neutral thing is drinking fags from a Nutribullet, <laughs> <laughs> blended up tobacco and menthol. All right, so they do taste bad, right? But they do actually make you feel quite nice, and that's a good thing. And it's easier than making an actual breakfast when you get to eleven in the morning and go. Oh my god, I feel like I'm going to collapse because I've got no sugar in me at all. Put a banana and some spinach in a thing and then down it like a nutter. But the, the fact thing that you've got spinach just to hand oh, yeah. means to me that you're living in a different world where a neutral it might be useful. I love I'd just spinach. be putting. I'd just it. be putting a fucking pre prepared meal and a bag of crisps from downstairs into it. <laughs> I, love, I love spinach, I love eating spinach, I love blanching, I love wilting. Like put a load of spinach on my oh, face and pour boiling oh, water board me. You parboil your own face. <laughs> and on a serious note, yeah. kids, <laughs> don't, don't char- parboil me up. <laughs> on a serious note, kids, if you want to be cool like Steve, blanching spinach when you're older, don't smoke cigarettes. You'll die before you're old enough to even understand the the correct way to blanch. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the Golden Girls. <laughs> oh. I was thinking about. Uh, I was thinking of the Golden Girls. Street, <laughs> street car named Desire. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Blanche. There's so many Blanches. Blanche. That's what he says. <laughs> I think we should have a, a Blanchet ban on any more Blanches. What, is this the end just, of your Ninja Bullet feature? No, it's not. Oh. It's not. <laughs> so basically the thing is, right, I like this thing. It's good. But it, it's become this massive sensation, and I find it funny that I think that the reason that they think it's a sensation is maybe not the reason that lots of people use it, in that it's just quite a good, easy, blended, smoothie thing. Mm -hmm. This is the manual for the Nutribullet, right? It's a hefty it's tone. It's obscene. I mean, admittedly, half of it is recipes for stuff. Is it all in English? Yes. There are an elderly couple on a scooter on the front of it. The man is laughing hysterically and not paying attention to the road, and the woman has thrown out hands up into the air in a way that I'd say stop it you're making the bike unstable you, <laughs> you dumb bitch it oh is... no sorry I hate that word no that's not a good word not a good word sorry so it's basically a user guide for, for those of you who are readers it is, it is literally a centimetre thick um, and it's for a device which effectively is just put the lid on it and put it on the thing and it goes whiz and you're done does it have recipes and tips it and does, tricks it does but, <laughs> but the majority of it is like a cult it is the first time I read this it was unbelieving it starts with this like incredible warnings about what you should and shouldn't do in terms of bits of things you shouldn't eat because you'll die don't reach into the Nutribullet to touch the spinning blades and so this is the first page properly <laughs> right congratulations <laughs> on your new lease of life right it's, it's a fucking cult so look do you want to, you want to read some of these yellow say, It doesn't even say new lease, lease of, of life. Lease it says on lease life. on life. Lease like you've, like you've, like not, you've got you're a leasehold of 9,000 years on your own life. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, you, congratulations on your new sub-tenancy. That's how in long the Guinness life Brewery hole. leasehold is. So it, it kicks off by basically saying, we're thrilled that you have chosen the path to optimum health and vitality. Which is like... Listen, I just want to eat a banana smoothie sometimes. But this is by the time you finish this paragraph, this is right into it. By the time you finish this paragraph, four Americans will have had a heart attack and another four will have had a stroke or heart failure. What? Yeah, That's right. Cheery reading. I know, right? And then it goes on to say deaths from cancer are projected to reach over 11 million in 2030. That has got an exclamation mark on it. I wasn't just making it cheery for my own sake. Wow. So it basically goes on really strong telling you that people are dying all over the world. And then you're still alive by the end of this. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> if you're one of the Americans who died. You're no. one of the lucky few. Or are you? <laughs> are the lucky ones already dead? <laughs> <laughs> then it goes, it has this proper, like, like mad, like, religious leaflet thing of saying, what is going on? Why are we so sick? Nutri bullets didn't exist in prehistoric times. Yeah. Oh, and hang on, that's, no. They should have done a chiselling of a cave painting of a Nutri bullet in old yeah. days. Yeah. Well, that's it. That could have saved people, apparently, because, yeah, it basically does say that these are all of these, most of the, the vast majority of these diseases and conditions can be directly attributed to the consumption of the Western diet. So it's basically saying people are dying of cancer and strokes and heart failure because they're eating badly, which is like, are you, fuck what? I don't think that's, is that true? So anyway, it goes on. Like yeah, but is it? <laughs> You don't have. You can just ask the question. You don't have to answer it. But is but it? Is, is it? Though? Yeah. But is well, it? Let's leave it there. So if you buy, <laughs> if you put all the things that you normally eat into the Nutri Bullet, blend it up a bit. See, like that. You'd be at best. But it says you'll be so repulsed by what you're eating that you'll eat less of it, and you'll be healthier. Mm. But this is the point where it, it's all okay. So don't worry, right? Mm. Fortunately, you, as a Nutri Bullet owner, have chosen to treat your body to the highest level of possible nutrition. It says you have chosen to thrive and feel great in capitals. Congratulations on making such a powerful decision. Powerful decision. <laughs> but it goes on to do all this stuff, and at the bottom it says, oh, the information in this guide and book is not a substitute for regular healthcare. <laughs> it's like, has to remind people that it's like, oh yeah, like, but if you're in America, like, we're not doctors, we you're just not actually going to be invincible. We, we, we tell you that you're going to live forever. What if I put lo like, fuck loads of chocolate and bacon in my Nutribullet? You're not going to be very well. Ooh. How about that? What if I got cancer after using a Nutribullet? It's not their fault. You probably did something wrong. You, it was probably cigarettes. So no. Yeah, that's it. You're, you're really... Uh, don't piss off the sponsors. Sorry. Oh, Morris. <laughs> we, haven't named oh, the phone. we haven't named a brand yet. It's probably cars. They've probably got hit by cars. If, if you are a cigarette manufacturer and you want us to name a brand positively in no, our next no. episode... <laughs> no, <laughs> no. We said we wouldn't do that. Okay. It's bad enough spon being sponsored by cigarettes. Yeah, Matt, Matt, I understand you've got the social justice warrior shit going on, but I, <laughs> I'd like a little bit of money, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Come on. Well, John Morris, whoever your name is, whatever. John, John you. Morris. Johnny Morris. <laughs> <laughs>
Chris Morris. Yeah, well, it's some of those fuckers. So yeah, after it was told you that you're going to die, it then tells you quite a while about how, how to do it. And I got fascinated by this manual because it just goes on forever about like telling you about how your life is going to be better. And it, it literally says, it says, start with one neutral blast a day. Because it has a few pages. Is that what one portion of a bullet is called, a neutral blast? They call it a, a neutral blast, which is like, it's not just the thing you've blended. It's like, oh, no, no, this is a specific thing. And, and then it says, start with one a day. And then it says, once you've got used to it, feel free to enjoy two neutral blasts a day. Boundless energy. That's a fucking hell That's of a thing. That's the same statement. rule I follow for ass blasts. <laughs> finger blasts. Yeah, ass finger blasts blast and ass blasts. If you can handle one finger blast in the morning, why not try two? <laughs> <laughs> the final page. Boundless energy. It really does set you up for the day. The fist a, blast. <laughs> I just think, like, saying people are going to have bound, boundless is such a, an um, audacious word to use. Like, you'll have energy without limits. No, like, I, when someone says boundless energy, I don't think infinite energy. I think it's just enough energy to jump over a fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not that much, is well, it? Well, yeah. technically not being able to jump over anything. I'm boundless. <laughs> I literally have no bounds. <laughs> Bounding. My ability to bound has been diminished by the finger blasting I got this morning. <laughs> I've been walking like a cowboy all day <laughs> and can't jump over anything so much as a style. <laughs> But yeah, it tells you, it says, people will start to comment on how good you look. Enjoy the compliments, you deserve them, and all this weird shit. But wow. it's the fact that it says here about this... this you are looking good, Matt, by the way. It's thank you, thank yeah. you. I think that's just probably health. It's right? unrelated to nutrition. Thank you very much. Unrelated, no. Unrelated. But then it basically, it says... Steve, like, you're looking good too. Uh, thank you. I, I can only put down to Marlboro <laughs> Menthol Ice Blast. Lovely. <laughs> I do I do three after my two finger blasts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after my finger blasts, I have a delicious ice blast. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the the bit that I had me howling was just the fact that it said, the more you blast, the better you'll feel. Kind of so it didn't the better even, you feel the longer the you last. <laughs> the longer you last, <laughs> the more you eat, the more you toot. The more you, <laughs> you toot, the, the better you feel. Nutrable so for every meal. meal. Oh, I'm so glad I said every word is perfectly in synchronisation with you yeah. there. That really made that effective. Yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> so, I'm sorry for trying to join in, Steve. So, <laughs> but yeah, it goes on to describe multiple phases. You have phase one, phase two, phase three. And it's like, it's proper just weird cult These stuff. These phases of your life. No, they're phases of, of neutroblasting. Of like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's an unbelievable manual. It's like, it's, it's not a manual. It's a manual oh, to no, Whenever you say neutroblasting, I just think of just someone... <laughs> pounding away on an asshole with a finger <laughs> without a dick with a dick just, or with maybe dick, it's just a really a aggressive punch fisting yeah. session there's some sort of cup involved which collects whatever liquids come out yeah, at the end just grabbing the dick and balls as one assemblage and just pulling it away from the asshole so they've got clear access to fully <laughs> nutri blast <laughs> just nutri blast oh god but yeah, it's just it's just grade A like a crazy American bullshit, and the fact that it tells you like to do as many of these as you want, just keep doing it like loads. It's like have loads of them, why not? And then it's like what what actually ref- what it tells you to do is make it so you have like something that's made of fifty percent fruit, and it's like if you what, actually get what like, is made out of fifty percent fruit, half an orange. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine joke. We've done it, lads. <laughs> back up, back up. Get the dogs. We're leaving. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, don't linger on it. Keep going. <laughs> We've got to fucking rest yeah. for a minute now. Oh, sorry, We've I'm been building too long for that. I'm exhausted. It's been what months? Maybe years? <laughs> We've done an actual joke. Good yeah, job, Steve. You can take the rest of the week off. Oh, Thanks, forget guys. about your job. Yeah. But yeah, the, the final thing I, I say. I need a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I need a neutral bullet, but mine would be. But look at this. It actually has two pages which shows you the two methods for how you can shake the thing if things get stuck in it. Oh. The, the shake technique and the tap technique. And it tells you just in detail how to shake something or how to tap love something that. on this the table. Is, this is the how it works category. Yeah. In a normal thing, this is the troubleshooting section. <laughs> <laughs> my, help, my Nucci Blast won't come out. Have you tried tapping? Have you tried tapping it or shaking it? It's like, no, no, how it works, the tap technique or the shake technique. I just can't imagine being what? someone. Is gravity not working on your, <laughs> your solidified lump of nuts and bullshit? <laughs> nuts and Or just simply just tap it until it greasily slides out. It's just mad that it has this... Like, who would look in a manual if you're like, like, oh, there's some bits that are stuck in the top of this and they won't go down to the bottom? Who would go, 
I know what I'll do. I'll look in the manual. There's got to yeah. be a solution for this. Yeah. Rather than just fucking shaking it. <laughs> like, what is... I mean, that's maybe the level of intelligence of people that they've been ensnaring in with is wacky cult nonsense. Um, well, you've got... To- You've got to convince people that it's worth buying, I suppose. There is, there is, is something the... about the package of it being like a lovely big manual that you can read on the bus. <laughs> on the way. Home. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just had a bit of a neutral blast. <laughs> so, um, how much is my finger blast and smokes? <laughs> yes. Can I ask how much a neutral bullet costs? I don't actually know. I didn't buy it. My girlfriend did. Uh, so I don't know. So in if, the if region you're now, just Google it. Yeah, <laughs> there you are. Information. You probably have your phone. You've got your phone in your hands. We could be doing it now, but we're not. No. Yeah. Look at it. Do it now. Oh my God! Look at how much it costs. Oh, oh that number. Yeah. It's a big number. That's a huge number. Bigger than I thought. Actually, a little bit less than I thought. But in the region. Yeah, but. <laughs> but I was actually you're not an optimistic uh, man, are you, though, Steve? I was late today because I I had to sit and. Uh, mark out pages in the manual and use a yellow pen to highlight some of the bits of text and I didn't want to do that on the tube because I thought I would look I like did the notice. biggest weird guy in the world like going through and like highlighting bits in a neutral bullet manual people would be like he's going to kill someone yeah I'll save it for well, a later reference he's going to live marking. to be 106 <laughs> yeah. he's going to kill someone and get away with it for <laughs> like 100 years um, he's going to get life and they won't know what to do with him because he's going to live forever <laughs> but yeah I just realised that actually this is the way to make loads of money so I've started, I've got a little quick device that I've invented which is like my cult kind of uh, device that I'm going to sell you've got three phases of a feature my God. much like a Nutriblast <laughs> yeah precisely we're now into tier three of the feature so uh, yeah to tap or shake the goodness <laughs> out of this bit can I have some, some heartwarming background music we understand how tough it can be to balance modern health requirements with the nitrous pace of modern life. Turbo yoga, running with dogs, three jobs and seven children, and a novel to pen while you're pumping at the gym. But you aren't just missing out on fun, you are literally dicking your life in the bin. That's, now we need something a bit more dramatic. Steve, you do more dramatic. We have the ability to edit this music. Oh, yeah, we can add these pictures, can't we? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he asked. Yeah. I'm not. I'm here now. I did ask you, yeah. That's quite nicely as well. So. Tired skin, loose eyes, you'll probably find yourself dead by 30. Of course, you won't be the one to find yourself dead. Those days of peeking through letterboxes and being faced with abject horror, they're numbered. <laughs> You're a corpse. But elsewhere, your friends are looking fit and fabulous, all thanks to a daily dose of fuck blasting. The onion fuck blast tube makes bulb cuisine easy. Simply fill up the blast tube with your favourite onions, top it off with a splash of organic onion milk, hit the button and repeat the fuck blast mantra. My life is better. And baby, you're blasting. Blast once a day for three days, then step it up to two. (laughs) After five days, up to four, then back down to two for the weekend chill out, allowing the onion receptors in your gut to grow fallow so you can step it up to layer two of the Fuck Blast program. Six blasts a day, every day. Blast with red onions for a sweet pudding treat or add a tablespoon of Horlicks for a bedtime warmer. You can feel it in your veins. You can feel it coursing through the pipes of your soul. Sometimes it feels like you're always crying, but it's better to be crying than to be absolutely dead. Welcome to layer three of the Fuck Blast program. The Onion Fuck Blast nurse administers liquid onion through an IV drip while you quietly sleep. You always sleep, but look at your skin. It practically glows and you are alive. (laughs) My God, you are alive. The Onion Fuck Blast tube. Out now. Not long until our live show on the 11th of September. It's exactly as many days as if you subtract the September, the number that comes after that. Well, it is now. This one, when this, the podcast comes out, it might be the tomorrow. Oh, shit! I haven't got a f- fucking feature yet. People might be listening to this like on their way to the live show. Oh. Like, and, and getting all like excited and being like, ah... Oh. God, yeah. they're, they're going to turn back and not come, aren't they? <laughs> they just heard what we just <laughs> done. Um, yes, that's sold out, unfortunately. So, sorry about that. But we will have upcoming shows, I'm sure. Yeah. And our patrons get first dibs on those ones. And we should have uh, some t-shirts sure soon as well. A t-shirts. Uh, Gav is sending out badges. People who helped us out <laughs> with our GMA nominations. Do we know if we're nominated for GMA yet? Don't Does, know. Is it, who knows? Who I mean, knows? We'll probably know next week. 
I, I haven't seen a fucking orgy of people tweeting congratulations to each other yet, so I'm sure that they haven't been around <laughs> yeah. yet. Um, but if you like what you listen to and want to support the podcast, you can go to www.patreon.com forward slash regular features. And you can help us out that way. Or you can go to greenmangaming.com forward slash regular features and buy a video game through those people. And then or you can just write a really amusing iTunes review for us. Yeah, maybe use lots us. of words which aren't rude, but maybe sound like they could be rude. Yeah, like or you could start another podcast and just constantly refer to us as the best podcasts around. Yeah, even, you could do. even if you can't say podcast and just say podcast. Podcast. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you could maybe, you could maybe pretend to be Ira Glass, wear his skin, do his job, and just talk about regular features all the time. Yeah, if you just did one episode of This American Life about us, my name's Ira Glass. You probably at least double the number of listeners that we have. Yeah, Ira, come on. No, not Ira. Somebody hey. pretend to be Ira and wear his skin like a. Cool Sarah blood. Koenig did a series of cereal about log. <laughs> Eating cereal. Me around. Yeah. And Looking up my be... telephone logs. Yeah. Well, oh, no, that's the same word twice. That's weird. But yeah, but they're different logs, aren't they? Because yeah, log, yeah, log but is it's, a still, it's still the same word. Why are you wearing clogs? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>